With me today is the highly acclaimed artist Sophie Matisse. Uh, Sophie has continued a tradition in the art of marketing and actually has made it a family affair. It's not a surprise to me that uh, Sophie is really holding her own in the art world and we are just excited to have her as a guest today. So Sophie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Very, very much. I wanted to talk to you. Um, you come from a family who's got a very strong history in the art world. And when first introduced to art, uh, your great-grandfather, Henry Matisse, he described his first experience in art as a kind of paradise. My question to you is, how would you describe your personal relationship with your art? Uh, I don't think it would be much different in the sense that um, I had always been drawing and and painting in one way or another since I was tiny and school was um, kind of a challenge for me but the art, um, the visual um, ways of communicating were never much of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I was always geared toward um, towards the arts to express myself more profoundly since I was having trouble with the, I had dyslexia and had trouble expressing myself through writing and I don't know if one expresses himself through math but that would be included as well so it really was, it was a paradise for me as well because I was free and I was capable of doing you know anything I wanted more or less I mean mm. <laughs> whatever we're capable of doing it you know sure. whatever age Great, great. Now you mentioned dyslexia. How has that been a positive thing for you? Um, <clears throat> first of all, I like the question. Positiveness <laughs> oh, no. is always good. Um, I think it was a positive because it never got in the way of what I wanted to do. Uh, if I um, put something upside down, it really wouldn't matter. Nobody would know. If I put the opposite color, nobody would really know. Um, so in, in some ways it became an invisible problem and actually it was a problem that was erased in, the, in my art so it became um, a, a non-obstacle mm. or the obstacle disappeared. Now I'm getting <laughs> I'm reversing it, there you go. So. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. <clears throat> now in addition you're also a daughter to a famous sculptor, uh, Paul Matisse. What was it like having your father in the art industry and kind of growing up in your early years? How did that affect your art? Well, my father was very um, exposed to the art world as he was growing up um, due to his mom and his dad being the art dealer. And um, later on, his mother um, married Marcel Duchamp, so there was a whole other section of the art world that he was uh, exposed to mm -hmm. and um, he sort of chose the more private side since he was um, he's an artist and I guess needs his solitude to to make his art and so he also created a kind of universe for himself where he was able to he's also I mean he makes tools to make his art mm -hmm. which is beautiful so he's an engineer as well of mm -hmm. anything you want you can I mean anything he wanted he could make essentially. So that was an, the kind of attitude that was in the house was whatever you want to do, just do it. It's not a problem. It's not like, no, you're not good enough to do that. It's, it's like when I painted the Vermeers, I never thought it was, you know, impossible. I just thought, oh, I love that painting. I think I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So the attitude can really take you quite far. And, it, and I felt like that was the attitude he gave me as a gift mm -hmm. that really allowed me to um, not be afraid and to go forth. Plus, he never really talked about Matisse mm -hmm. and um, Duchamp either. So it mm. there wasn't that sort of heaviness of um, of the legacy. Mm. Lovely. That's that's amazing. So it was nice that that didn't come in the beginning. It came later when I became more outside of the house and in the world. But as an early um, in the early beginnings, it was not there. So I thought that was pretty pretty important. 